Hi there, my name is Rufus Deutschler, Worldwide Design Evangelist at Adobe Systems. In this episode of CS Insider, I wanted to talk a little bit about Adobe Repoussé, the 3D feature in Photoshop CS5 Extended, because there's really cool stuff you can do with that. In Photoshop, Photoshop Extended, I add, we can go here over to the 3D workspace, okay? And we can see that we can create 3D objects in Photoshop from several types of sources. We can select layers, a work path, a current selection, a file. We can even create 3D postcards from an image. We can create 3D shapes from a preset, such as a cone, a ring, a soda can, and then apply um, 3D graphics on those. The 3D effect I want to talk about today is repoussé, to create a 3D repoussé object. And to do that, I will add some text to that image. Let's write the word create, make that slightly bigger. And here, ah, let's place it right here. And here over in the create new 3D object, I will ask Photoshop to create a new 3D repoussé object and click create. Photoshop tells you that this text layer will actually be rasterized to do that, but that's fine. Let's say, let's say yes to that. And what Photoshop will do here, it'll take the pixels of the text and actually extrude them to create that 3D object. In the repoussé window over here, we see all the things that we can actually do with a repoussé object. For example, we can uh, use a variety of shape presets. The normal one is just a normal extrusion. But you see that when I go down here, I have longer extrusions or extrusions with a twist. Let's apply this one for a second just to show you on screen how that looks. And it actually does an extrusion with a rotation. Uh, if we go down, it can also do an extrusion that makes um, some sort of a curve with the text. Okay? I call this almost like 3D sculpting inside of uh, Photoshop CS5 Extended. But let's go back to our previous shape preset, the normal one. And look at this other thing here. We can also choose the materials that we want to use on that, on that object. And you see, there's various faces to the object. There's the front and then a couple of bevels, the back of the object, and the sides of the object. And all of those can be textured differently. If we go here in the menu, you see that there's whole, a whole bunch of textures that you can already use. And that goes from mar marble to checkered, uh, shiny thing here. And, uh, but let's leave it white for a second. And I will show you in a second also how you can get more of those materials and presets. Here we can also choose the depth of the extrusion. For example, if I, if I write two in here, uh, we see that uh, the object is now extruded more, but let's go back to one. Uh, I can change the scale of the extrusion, the shear, the bend. I can inflate the, uh, the front and the back of the object. Let's just change the angle to that so you can see on screen what that actually does. I've changed the angle to that extrusion. Then you can inflate the front or the back of the object or both the front and the back. You can add bevels to the front of the object to, to really shape the 3D object exactly as you need. I'm simply going to say OK to that. And before I continue, I wanted to show you up here in the 3D menu, there's actually a possibility to browse 3D content online. And this will take you to Photoshop.com where you can download free other textures. And there's a whole bunch of links also to, um, to providers of 3D objects that you can place into Photoshop CS5 Extended. Okay, so now we have the 3D object. And the thing that I want to do here, let me go back to my Essentials workspace for a, for a moment and inside of the layers. This is the 3D object. You can recognize it by the little icon here. And if I double click on it, you see that we have access to all of its parts. I can use this tool here, for example, to move it around. Okay, The same tool that we actually have here. Let me Command Z out of that to put it back into place. I can change the camera view of how we actually look at the object. I can change the direction of the lights, but I will show you that in a second. Because one thing I would like to see on that object is actually the ground plane. Because in Photoshop, this 3D object actually lies on the ground plane. And I can change with the camera movement, I can really place that ground plane exactly as I need it so that it fits my perspective inside of the image. 
The other thing I can see here, let's turn off the ground plane and turn on the 3D lights. And these are my lights. And if I go over here in the 3D scene, we see that I have an infinite light. I have, let me make that slightly bigger here. Let me scroll down a little bit. We have an infinite light one, two, and three. And as I go through these, you see that I can use my little light spinning tool here and actually place these lights exactly like I need to shine the light on the object exactly as I want to. The other thing I want to do here is under the 3D menu to actually um, activate the ground plane shadow catcher. And what that means is that when the light will actually shine on the object, it'll create shadows on that ground plane which I've just shown you. Photoshop tells me that the shadows created on the ground plane shadow catcher will only be visible once the uh, object will be rendered. And that's another interesting thing to know. Photoshop has a ray tracing rendering engine right within it. And we're going to be using that. So let's say OK to this. Reopen the 3D object. So we have the lights. We have all of our objects here. I want to go back to the lights. What I want to do is to change the softness of the light so that the, the, the shadows created by the infinite light one are actually softer than the others. And I'm going to change that to maybe something like 20%. All right, we're done. Let's go back to our scene here. And we're going to change the quality of the rendering from interactive to a ray traced draft. OK, that's a bit faster than the ray traced final. Ray traced final is really the best ray tracing that you can create in Photoshop. Let's make a quick one just to get the idea of how this actually works. The ray trace engine starts. It starts scanning the image. And as you can see, all of the shadows that this image creates are actually created on the elements themselves. They cast shadow on each other and also on the ground plane. And this is something that would have been much, much harder to do just visually, right? To try to guess how the shadows really work. So remember that in Photoshop CS5 Extended, you have this really cool tool called Repousse that lets you create 3D objects right here in Photoshop from text, from selections, from Bezier designs that you, so from vector designs that you've created in Photoshop, and really create engaging content and mix that 3D content with 2D content that you may have available in a uh, in a photograph such as this one. Thank you for following this episode of CS Insider, and I'll be seeing you soon.